Right, guys and girls, we've got actually the combined lineup of the Premier League and La Liga for 2018. And a couple of interesting things have come out of it. Basically, I've chosen uh, the most voted ones in a formation uh, that included um, players that I thought that had to be in. And I added one or two uh, ahead of your votes. So it really is a combined 11 from the combined La Liga and the Premier League. Let me read you the names first and then we can talk about some of the things that have come out uh, through it. One, Alisson will be the goalkeeper, a defence of three of Van Dijk, Varane and Laporte. De Bruyne, Modric, Kante and David Silva are the midfielders and a front three of Messi, Salah and Sané in whatever formation you want to put them. Sané on the left, Salah on the right, Messi in the middle, but they will move. So the first thing to say is that really out of those 11, only four perhaps have actually been consistent enough uh, to get the end of last season and the beginning of this one and say, what a great year. See if you agree. Silva will be one of them, who scored five goals since February and eight all competitions this season. So after his own personal turmoils with his family, actually he's found a consistency and a goal scoring form that we haven't seen regularly perhaps with David Silva, but uh, it's there and has put him as one of the best players of 2018. Messi, you know, consistency, Messi means consistency. <laughs> so uh, no doubt he has affected games last season and also this season, I will include Van Dijk and also Alisson. Uh, Van Dijk, of course, because when he came in uh, in, the, in the winter transfer window, actually made an instant impact. The goals conceded by Liverpool were reduced straight away. And of course, he's helped to have 10 clean sheets this season already. And Alisson is the same, finished very well at Roma. Yes, he had a few mistakes, like the famous one against Leicester uh, in September, but still, you have to say he's adapted really quickly and has become the best goalkeeper, according to you, and I agree as well, the best goalkeeper in the Premier League. And this is where we can argue a little bit, the best combined goal goalkeeper between La Liga and the Premier League. I had to put a black on the bench because I believe he's the best goalkeeper in the world. In one-on-one -on -one situations, uh, bringing the ball back if he needed to, not so much at Atletico Madrid, but he's got the accuracy to put a ball in the right place. Uh, he's got the intelligence as well to do it at the right time and, uh, and to the side well. But also he saves the almost impossible, which you can tell the same of De Gea, of uh, certainly of Alisson, of Ederson. Uh, but uh, I do feel that of like is perhaps a little bit ahead globally. But these last 12 months have proven that uh, Alisson has had a form that um, is is got no equal. Uh, yes, you can say that O'Black has got similar stats, but it was a difficult job to do, actually, to come to the Premier League, adapt to it straight away as a goalkeeper, perhaps the uh, role that is more difficult uh, to, um, to impress straight away, and also do it at a team that uh, has changed the way they defend. Uh, all that has adaptation has come very, very quickly, so Alisson deserves to be there. The other thing to come out of uh, the lineup is actually the fact that uh, there are eight in the lineup, eight players from the Premier League, and only three from La Liga. And if you look at the bench, uh, Hazard, Suarez, Sterling, Obemayang, Eriksen, Alba, and Oblak. Only Suarez, Alba, and Oblak will be from La Liga, and Hazard, Sterling, Obemayang, and Eriksen from the Premier League. Do I agree with that? I absolutely agree with that. The best players are right now in the Premier League. Uh, with the exception of two or three, of course, or, uh, we, which we've seen and have put in the lineup, everybody else is in the Premier League. Everybody wants to be there. The wages are higher. The, uh, it's the most followed league in the world, uh, certainly with um, uh, quality of coaching that is cannot compare to anywhere else and uh, generally uh, those are the teams the clubs that can bring those players because they've got the money that not even now Barcelona or Madrid have certainly not so 
it's only logical. What surprises me a little bit is that then, that, why doesn't that get transformed into more success in Europe? Remember, if I'm not mistaken, 22 of the last 30 uh, European titles have been won by Spanish clubs. And I think that because there's a series of uh, reasons. One, they actually uh, is a much similar style from La Liga and Europe. So you, you are a La Liga team, then you go to Europe and you have to play more or less in a similar, similar way, perhaps with more intensity, both offensive and offensive, but in a, more or less in a similar way. But the Premier League uh, demands of you uh, a series of things that when you go to Europe, you have to get rid of. Uh, the uh, the box-to-box -box football, the lack of control sometimes, uh, even uh, for teams like like Liverpool that are increasing the control of the games, uh, they still sometimes struggle to do so against uh, better opposition in, in Europe. Uh, the referees, referees allow a lot of things in, uh, in the Premier League that they don't allow in Europe and to jump from one to the other is not easy for players and coaches that plan things in a certain way. As we all know, no break means that these uh, players that are either there's more injuries or tiredness at the end of the season at a time where you have to be really sharp. Learn from Cristiano Ronaldo, who slows down his start of the season to be uh, much better at the end, or has done with Real Madrid, with Juventus, is maintained his level so far. But it is true that uh, European teams seem to be less tired at the end of it. And it's not because there's no competition in their leagues. It is how they use their energies, even within games. In La Liga, you can see teams resting actively, if you like. Uh, when, when games are won, when games are 2-0 or 3-0, it's difficult for the rivals to actually overcome that. It's very, very difficult. In the Premier League, for instance, nobody gives up. And it's often a coin in the air what happens in games. And you have to be very alert. And when you think you control the game for 89 minutes, something can happen at the end. That was one of the beauties of the Premier League. And that gets reflected as well in the teams, of course. Those things affect the teams when they go to Europe. And you have to say that uh, Spanish teams are better prepared uh, to succeed in Europe. And they've shown to do so in the last, in the last decade. So if we go just um, through the team a little bit, anything else that we can come out with is that, as we were saying, some of the players have not shown the same consistent form throughout the season. Varane, for instance, is having a very poor season, this one. So uh, started, finished very well last season, of course, and World Cup winner, but started with a lot of mistakes and injury problems on this one. Laporte actually has progressed towards one of the best centre-backs in the world. And we've seen that in the last three months, not so much at the beginning when he was even played as a left-back with, uh, with City. De Bruyne, we know of his injury problems. Modric has completely physically and mentally collapsed after the World Cup, uh, reaching such highs sometimes. Does that for you? Uh, Kante, he is now confused about his role. We are also, and uh, I think... Uh, what Sarri wants to do is to take advantage of the ability to drive with the ball and to appear from deep positions. And to do that, he's in a transition. So it was a better Kante last season than it is now. Messi is Messi and for me has been the best player of 2018 if I had to choose one. Salah, of course, we know that um, uh, also change of position, sometimes as a nine, sometimes in white areas and the way that Liverpool attacks has affected his stats. But... He'll come back. He's coming back. And Sané has had moments of brilliance, and that's why he deserves to be in that lineup. Do you agree? If you uh, don't, give me your lineup, and uh, we can discuss that further. Now, wait for the next two uh, lineups of 2018. The lineup of the rest of the European leagues, top leagues, except the Premier League and La Liga, and of course, the lineup of the under 21s of the whole of Europe.